Praise the Lord for this wonderful day that the Lord has made for us again to worship Him in spirit and in truth. We are so blessed to come before the Lord as we come to hear the message of our God. Can we open our Bible to the book of Luke chapter 10 from verses 38 to 42 and we will be talking about one better thing needed. Let me read in the NIV translation of the Bible. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparation that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, You are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Can we bow our heads and let us pray? O most gracious and heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of your Son, Jesus. And we are so thankful, Lord, for this wonderful day that you have made for us to worship you. Truly, we acknowledge, Lord, that you are indeed our God that is so mighty and strong. Our God that is so gracious and loving, for your love never fails, O Lord. We thank you, Father, that you remain so faithful to each and every one of us and how you sustain us, O Lord God, in our everyday lives. Father, we submit unto you our hearts today as we worship you, as we come to hear your message for all of us. We ask, Father, that you may fill our lives with your awesome presence, Lord, and that your grace will continue to abound in our hearts, O Lord God. And we ask, O Father, that you may guide us through as we listen to your words. We invite the presence of your Holy Spirit, Father, as we Come to hear your words. May the Spirit of yours continue to enlighten our hearts of the very things that you want us to learn through your words today. We submit unto you our hearts, O Lord God. May you continuously be exalted, O Father, that as we hear your message for all of us, we are able to respond with obedience, with submission according to your words. May it be done for all of us, O Lord. Father, we submit our hearts before you today. And may your name alone will be continuously be exalted in the midst of your people. We come to bless your name, O Lord God, and we continue to honor you and give you praise, for this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. One better thing needed based on Luke chapter 10 from verses 38 to 42. Our theme for this month of August conveys the truth about discipleship of how we need to grow to be like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's why for our team, we talk about growing to be like Christ. And our sub-team for this week is talking, we, we talk about the personal time with God and how important it is that we are able to spend time with our Lord. We are to grow to be like the Lord in all aspects of our walk with Him. And Jesus Christ modeled a kind of life that we need to exemplify in our lives. And one aspect to learn from Him is how He always spent personal time with His Father. The Gospel account wrote of how the Lord will come to a secluded place to commune with God in prayer. Now, one of the problems to spend quality time alone with our Lord and our God is getting time alone. Somehow, we are accompanied most of the time with someone or something. We are overwhelmed with so many things in life that there is no definite time that we are able to spend being alone by ourselves. We live in a very busy world that values productivity and has great expectation of things that should be accomplished each day. We find it so difficult for us to have time that we are not busy with someone 
and with many things. God desires to cultivate an intimate relationship with each one of us <clears throat> and how the Lord seeks His children to come to Him. God gave us both a challenge and a promise in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13 that we will seek Him and find Him when we seek Him with all our heart. As children of God, we need time to spend intimately with our Father in heaven. And similarly, we have to spend time at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ as being His disciples. But the problem, most of us have difficulty sustaining a regular time with God, creating time when we simply sit at the feet of Jesus and enjoy His presence has been a common struggle for most of us. Now, what is the blessing when we are cultivating a time to spend with our God? The reasons for cultivating personal intimate time with God and His words, that wherever the time that we come to, to His presence to spend time with Him, as we continue to enjoy our relationship with our Father. Spending time with God and His Word come with blessings of what the Lord can accomplish in us. In Psalms 19 verse 7 to 8, The law of the Lord is perfect, repressing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. So from this passage in the book of Psalms 19, we can see a lot of things that brings blessing to all of us and goodness whenever the time that we come to spend time with the Lord and His words. It was mentioned here in this psalm that whenever the time that we come to the Lord in and hear his words, his words will always repress or represses our soul. Not only it represses our soul, but also it makes wise the simple. And at the same time, as we hear the message of the Lord from time to time at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, as we hear his words, it will always give joy in our hearts. And at the same time, because the commands of the Lord are radiant, it will always give light to our eyes. Just like what the book of Psalms says, that the words of the Lord will always be like a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Similarly, in the book of Psalms 62, from verses 1 and 2, we can say that how important it is that we spend time in the Lord as we hear His words. Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from Him. Truly He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. We always find rest for our soul every now and then that we come at the feet of the Lord to hear His words. In Psalm 63 verse 1 and 3, 1 to 3, You, you God are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you, my whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water, I had seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. From this passage in the book of Psalm 63, we can say that why we always come to spend time with the Lord is because his love will always be better than life. That as we earnestly seek the Lord and thirst for more of God in our lives and long to be in the presence of the Lord, how good it is when we spend time in His presence. And it is always that somehow it gives us satisfaction in our lives, goodness in our lives, whenever the time that we are in the presence of the Lord. Because... It is where we spend time with God, allowing His love to penetrate our hearts. And that love sustains us in our everyday living. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. 
then you will be prosperous and successful. The promise of the Lord is that whenever the time that we hear the words of the Lord, as we meditate it day and night and spend time in communion with the Lord, in hearing the very words of our God, we know that He will always make us prosperous and successful in all the things that we do. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. We are commanded by the Lord to continue to crave for the word of the Lord so that we are able to grow up in our lives as believers of Christ. Now, the most important thing that we need to understand when we talk about spending time with our Lord at His feet is that how much time do we spend with someone and with many things in life? It is good to contemplate and reflect how much time do we spend with someone and with many things in our lives? And at the same time, how much time do we spend alone with God? Now in our passage today, there is one thing that the Lord emphasized that we always need to concentrate in our lives. One better thing needed. And in our passage, it conveys the importance of how we need to have personal time with God. When Jesus and his disciples were on their way, they came to a village called Beth Bethany where Martha, Mary, and Lazarus lived. Both Martha and Mary have their own individual desire and way of wel welcoming the Lord. They both want to please Jesus. Martha offered her home and service to the Lord. Mar Martha became busy of her service to Jesus as she forget, she forgot the most essential thing of spending time to hear the word of the Lord. Mary, on the other hand, offered her heart and submitted herself to Jesus at His feet in listening to His words. Mary has chosen one thing which is better. It is something that cannot be taken away from her. Jesus Christ revealed that there is only one thing needed and it cannot be taken away from us. The Lord was preparing of spending time at His feet in listening to His words. Like Martha, we become busy and distracted of many things that we have no time to have personal relationship of spending time with our God as Mary did. There is a need for constant sitting at the feet of the Lord, allowing our heart to be open to what Jesus is saying to us. Giving service to God as we do our ministry requires constant sitting at the Lord's feet to receive press instruction from the Lord of the things we want to do for Him. Let us examine how Martha and Mary responded when Jesus visited them in those times. The first thing that we need to understand is that Martha offered her home and service to the Lord. In Luke chapter 10, verse 38, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. Now when Martha welcomed Jesus and his disciples at her home, it was an instant invitation. There was no time to do enough preparations. Martha was busy preparing food for the Lord and his disciples. And we can relate how stressful it is when we don't have time to prepare for our coming important guests. And we can relate to that. This was the condition of Martha in those times. She was overwhelmed by her preparation that she loses her focus and became distracted of things to be done alone. Not only she offered her home and service to the Lord, but as she prepared things to please the Lord by way of preparing food for him and his disciples, Martha became distracted of the things to be done. 
That's why in verse 40a of our passage today, but Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. Martha became distracted of the things to be made as she welcomed the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. She was overwhelmed by her preparations and her desire to impress Jesus of what she was doing. Now, in our lives, brothers and sisters in Christ, we are like Martha somehow. Many times we end up being distracted or we are being sidetracked and unfocused in most of the things we do. Now, why do you think we end up being distracted of the things that we want to do in our lives, especially in giving service and doing the ministry that God has called us? Many times we are being distracted because we have less time to do things. Just like Martha in those times, he, he, he was overwhelmed of the things and the preparations that she needs to do to serve Jesus, but she has less time. At the same time, we become distracted when we are so overwhelmed of many things to do, especially in our service before the Lord. And because we are, we are having less time and we are overwhelmed of the many things that we need to do, we become pressured and that's why we are distracted of the things we need to do. So what will be the results when we become distracted of the things that we want to do in life, especially in our service before God? It will cause us to lose our focus on what we do. Instead of focusing on what we do, somehow we become distracted of many things. It robs our motivation and heart in doing things. Not only it robs our motivation and our heart on what we want to do, but at the same time, it will always lead us to worry and to become anxious. That's why in the life of Martha in those times, uh, she loses her focus of what we he want or uh, what she want to do for the Lord and her motivation and heart of doing things somehow had caused her to become worried and to become anxious. It causes weary leading to self pity. That's why not only she become distracted of the many things that she needs to do as she prepares to serve Jesus Christ. But at the same time, Martha became disturbed. Not only she become she became distracted of many things, but she became disturbed of doing the work alone. Martha became distracted of uh, doing things with little time to prepare. And at the same time, she became pressured or being pressured, she was disturbed to know that she was doing the entire task alone. Many times in our lives, when we are distracted, it will always uh, lead us to be disturbed. And that is what had happened to Martha in those times. Now, when we are distracted of many things, it will always uh, bring us disturbance in the things that we want to accomplish. Why we end up disturbed is because disturbed doing it alone and by ourselves. That's why uh, Martha, when she was overwhelmed of the many things that she want to do for Jesus, and because of those many preparations that she has to do, she become distracted of many things, and that's why it led her to be disturbed as she was able to see that she has to do it by herself. This Disturbed seeing others being relaxed and complacent. Sometimes we are disturbed because we are doing things by ourselves and then we started to see others being relaxed and complacent. We become disturbed by comparing works with others. We started to compare the things that we are doing with the things that other people also is accomplishing. That's why we become disturbed of many things. Now what it will be the result when we are disturbed of the things that we do in life. It will always lead us to envy and jealousy. And at the same time, it ends being upset. It will always 
lead us to be upset of many things and it causes complaining and grumbling. Whenever you, that you become uh, anxious already and worry of many things, not only it will lead to, to envy and jealousy, but you will become upset, leading now to complain and to grumble. And that's what we can see in the life of Martha when she, beca when she became distracted, when she became disturbed of many things as she continued to uh, do the service that she wants to do for the Lord. And she, when she started to see and uh, that she, is, she was doing it alone and overwhelmed by the many things that she was doing by herself, she started now to complain to the Lord. And what that we can see in Luke chapter 10, verses 40v. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. That's why when she was overwhelmed of many things that she was doing, and she found that she was doing it by herself, and, and as, she, as she saw, her sister Mary just sitting down at the feet of the Lord listening to him she started to come to the Lord she came to him and asked Lord don't you care that my sister had left me to do the work by myself tell her to help me he said it that's the cause sometimes that when we started now to compare ourselves of the many things that we do with the other people of the things that they also do we started now to to compare ourselves and that's why we become so distracted of many things we become uh, we are disturbed of these things and that's why we grumble and we complain now how do we handle distraction and disturbance so that uh, we are able still to focus on the things that we are able to do especially in our service as we give service to the Lord and there are several things that we need to understand how to handle distraction and being disturbed in what we do. Number one, we have to stay focused in what we do in our lives or whatever that you want to do or service that you are doing for the Lord. We need to be focused on the things that we want to do for the Lord. We will not be distracted of what we are seeing around us trying to compare what you are doing with the things that other people also are doing in service, in serving the Lord. We need always to focus on the work that we want to accomplish for God and what we want to accomplish in our lives. Because if we will, be, uh, we will not focus ourselves, we will become distracted and disturbed of the things that we want to accomplish. Second, we need to do things in the name of the Lord and for His glory. That's why... Uh, we will not be bothered by the things that, uh, that around us and at the same time, we will not be distracted of the things of the people around us as well. But as we focus ourselves on the work that God has called us to do, we will always do it for the glory of His name. We are always to do things in the name of our Lord and that indeed we are doing this not for ourselves, not for anyone that's why we are able to focus, we are able to give our heart because everything that we are doing is for the glory of the Lord. Number three, you have to rely on God's strength and His grace. Many times we become distracted and disturbed because we, we want to accomplish things by our own strength and by our, our own skills. But in doing service for the Lord, especially in accomplishing uh, the very works in our lives, we have to rely on the strength of our God and at the same time to rely on His grace. I believe that we are able to cover up everything in our lives if we will continue to rely on the strength of the Lord and at the same time allow the grace of God to give us this, the provision so that we are able to do all these things for His glory and that we are able to please Him in what we are doing. Don't allow others' work to influence our lives. We need not to compare ourselves when we are 
accomplishing things for the Lord. We need to focus on our own ministry because our aim is to please the Lord, to glorify His name. We will not allow other works or others' work to influence and to disturb us in serving God. And then, know your labor will be richly rewarded in heaven. That no matter how busy we will be in serving the Lord, although we are overwhelmed of the many things that we are doing for, for God and for the Lord and for our, everything that we want to accomplish in our lives, we know that everything, when we do it for the, in the name of the Lord, for the glory of His name, and as we continue to rely on the provision and the strength of our God, we know that our uh, labor, we will reap the blessings and it will be richly rewarded by the Lord. Now, we, come, we came to see how Martha opened her home to the Lord and she really started to give service to our God. Now, what about Mary? Now, Mary opened her heart to Jesus. In Luke chapter 10, verse 39, she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what He said. Martha and Mary have their own individual desire and way of welcoming the Lord Jesus Christ. Martha and Mary both want to please the Lord. When it comes to Mary, what she offered to the Lord is her service. Martha offered her home and service to the Lord. She opened her home to Jesus by preparing something for Jesus Christ. Her desire is to serve Jesus and offer something to please Him. On the other hand, Mary offered her heart. What she offered to the Lord is that she submitted herself at the feet of the Lord to listen to His words. She opened her heart when she sat at the feet of Jesus. Her desire is to listen to the words of the Lord. She submitted herself fully at Jesus' disposal. Both Martha and Mary responded by pleasing Jesus but by what they wanted to do for the Lord. Martha's service of preparing food for Jesus would have been acceptable to the Lord if she did not end up distracted of many things. She became worried and upset that Jesus said to her that there is only one thing needed. Mary has chosen one thing which is better. It is something that, we, that cannot be taken away from her. And what is that one thing, that, or one better thing that Jesus was referring? In Luke chapter 10, verses 41 to 42, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, You are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. So from here, we, we saw how Jesus Christ was referring to one better thing that Martha needed, which will not be taken away from her if she chose to listen at the feet of the Lord, as what Mary did in those times. Now, Martha became worried and upset in her service to Jesus, but Mary has chosen one thing that is better, which will not be taken away from her. It is a heart that is open with desire to listen to the words of Jesus. It is a heart that submits oneself at the Lord's feet in listening to His words. We know, brothers and sisters in the Lord, that giving service to God is so important and good but if we would not give our whole heart and attention to what we want to do for the Lord by ending distracted 
of our service that it becomes unacceptable to Him. Giving service to the Lord, brothers and sisters in Christ, requires a heart that is always tuned and focused on God's words which Martha failed to choose. There is a need for constant sitting at the Lord's feet and allowing our heart open to what Jesus is saying to us. Giving service to God requires press instructions from the Lord of the things we do for Him. That's why it is important that when we are giving service to the Lord, brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to put our whole heart on what we want to accomplish for the Lord. We need to, it requires a heart that is always tuned and focused on the very words of the Lord which Martha failed to choose. It is important that when we do our ministry in serving God, it is essential that we need to sit down first at the feet of the Lord to receive instruction of the very things that we want to accomplish in the ministry that the Lord has called us to do. It is a time of spending moment with Him intimately, allowing the Lord to give us again the grace when there are times that uh, we become weary of the ministry that we are doing for the Lord. Somehow, uh, it is a time that we can really refocus ourselves to the very things that God wants us to accomplish in our lives. It is a time when we spend in the presence of the Lord to be motivated again in our service with God, to be encouraged to continue to go on in spite of the hardship that we are experiencing in our ministry, in our service before the Lord. And it is important that before we do preparation and become overwhelmed and busy in doing things to serve the Lord, how good and how indeed uh, needed for us to sit down at the feet of the Lord. And that is one better thing that we need to do from time to time that will not be taken away from us. When we spend time to hear the very words of the Lord, and that words that is being planted in our hearts cannot be taken away from us. It will remain in us as we continue to submit our hearts and cherish the very words that Jesus is giving unto us. Now, spending time at the feet of Jesus is so necessary. How important it is, brothers and sisters in the Lord, as we have our, uh, our focus on our theme this month of how we need to grow to become like the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we saw how Jesus Christ always spent time with His Father intimately in a secluded place where, we, where He can spend time in prayer and in communion with His Father. And how important it is also for us, brothers and sisters in the Lord, that we are able to spend time in communion with our Father, at the same time in communion with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why it is important that we are to spend time to seek a time that we can be alone with God because it helps us to focus on the Lord and not on the things we do that overwhelms us. Just like what Martha did in those times. She was able, she was overwhelmed of the many things in life, but she started to, to remove her focus on the Lord, who indeed she wants to please. Whenever with the time that we spend time at the feet of the Lord, it will help us always to focus on the Lord, to allow the Lord to empower us to allow the Lord to give us grace and receive the blessing of the Lord that we are able to do the things that He has called us to serve Him. Not only we are able to focus on the Lord, but also we will not be distracted of the things that we want to accomplish in our lives. Because once we remove our focus on the Lord and started to focus on the overwhelming things that we want to accomplish in life, in our service, in our ministry, in the Lord, then we will become 
overwhelmed with it, and then it will lead us to be distracted and to be disturbed. Another blessing when we spend time in communion with the Lord, when we spend time at the feet of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it will always help us to be encouraged, to be motivated to do and what we are doing for the Lord. Isn't it when we spend time in service to the Lord as we receive the instruction that God wants us to give before we do the ministry that God has called us. It is a time that the Lord will encourage us. It is the time wherein the Lord will touch our hearts. And He will always motivate us to do what we are called by the Lord to do in our lives. At the same time, spending time at the feet of the Lord is so necessary is because it helps us to rely on the power of God's words and His strength instead of our own. Many times in our lives, while we are overwhelmed of many things in life, especially in accomplishing the very purpose of our lives, and also in doing the ministry that the Lord has called us to do, we become distracted and disturbed of many things because we rely on our own strength. We rely on our own wisdom and skills. It is important that if we want to serve the Lord and we want to please Him, in the things that we want to do for the Lord. Not only we are called to focus on God, to focus on Jesus, and allow Him to motivate our lives and encourage us, but at the same time, we are to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit that will give us always the strength to do things, and that the words of the Lord will always give us the power, and at the same time, to rely on the power of God and on His strength. The Bible says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. It means to say whether we are uh, experiencing sufferings and persecutions in, in our lives, although that is the context of that passage, and at the same time, uh, we are able to bear and overcome all things in lives. It's because we are able to rely purely on the strength and the power of God who can always which can always strengthen us in all aspects at all times it helps us to rely on the power of the Lord especially when we are overwhelmed of many things in life allow the power of God and his strength to continue to to, uh, to fill us so that we are able to accomplish the very things that we want to accomplish in our lives at the same time to do the service that we want to, to give to the Lord. And then the last thing, how important it is that we need to spend time at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ because it helps us to receive press instructions from the Lord before we do our service. From time to time, we want to give glory to the Lord as we give service unto Him. It is important that before we make any preparation, anything, in doing that service before God, it is important that we need to sit down at the feet of the Lord, not only to receive the press instructions that the Lord wants us to give as we serve Him in a particular day or aspect of service to God, but at the same time, it is a time that we are able to receive the blessing of the Lord that can really move us as we do the service that God has called us to give unto Him. Let us always rely on the grace of the Lord. And as we spend time in communion with the Lord, we know that uh, the Lord will continue to transform us. We know that in our daily communion with the Lord, it is the Lord uh, who is uh, changing our lives from time to time. That as we spend time in communion with the Lord, our intimate uh, relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ become more intimate, more deeper in our walk with our God. As I close, brothers and sisters in Christ, there will be times that giving service to God would not be possible anymore. It may be somehow when you are retiring already because of age that you cannot 
give any more service to God and you cannot do any more the ministry that you are doing for the Lord. It may be somehow some, some other aspect why you cannot give service to the Lord anymore. But sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ with a desire to listen to His words will continue no matter our age will be. It is one thing that is so better to do in our lives and it will always continue. It is one thing that we all need and the words we hear that are planted in our hearts will not be taken from us. The motivating factor that inspires us in doing things for Jesus and others is the very words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we cherish in our hearts. Jesus said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will endure forever. God desires to cultivate an intimate relationship with each one of us and how the Lord seeks His children to come to seek Him and to come to His presence. Jesus said, There is one thing needed that it will not be taken from us. And that is to spend time with Him, to spend time with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we listen to His words and instructions for our daily service to Him. I will leave these two questions as we end this. What is something about your life that interferes with time alone with God? I believe there are many things that hinders us that we are able to spend time alone with the Lord. And at the same time, what are the things that motivate and help us to spend time at the feet of Jesus Christ? I hope and pray that as we listen to these words of the Lord and respond, as we reflect ourselves to these questions, are we able really to give time to the Lord at, to sit down at the feet of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to hear and to listen to His very words. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. O most gracious and heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of your Son, Jesus, and we are so thankful, Father, for this wonderful day that you have made for us to rejoice, to give glory and praise unto your name. We thank you, Father, for your goodness for your greatness in our lives, that you are indeed our Father that is so faithful, our gracious Lord. And indeed, O God, we come before you with praises and thanksgiving, glorifying your name. Thank you, Father, for your very words that we had received with gladness in our hearts and how you had called us to spend time alone with you. And indeed, O Lord, as we reflect on our theme for this month of August, that how you want us to grow, to become like more Jesus in our everyday lives. And it is necessary, Lord, as we grow in that, in that uh, knowledge, in that uh, goodness, O oh Lord God, to become like our Lord. You had called us, O oh Lord, to spend time, a very intimate time, to be alone with you, Father. Lord, May you forgive us if there are times, O oh Lord God, that we are overwhelmed of the many things that we do in life, that we cannot find any more time to be with you alone. Forgive us, O oh Lord, if there are times that we are overwhelmed of our ministry in giving service to you, that we fail to sit down first at your feet and to receive your press instructions of the things that you want us to accomplish in our service, in our ministry. Father, we are so thankful, O oh Lord, for your words that we come to receive, O oh God. Thank you, Lord God, for reminding us that somehow we become like Martha in those days. There are times, O oh Lord God, that there is no doubt we want to please you, that we want to accomplish many things for you, Father, but we fail and we forgot the very one thing that is needed, and that is to sit down at the feet of the Lord and to listen to His words. There is no doubt, Lord, that You have called us to give service unto You, but it is also important that before we are able to give service unto You, Father, and do the things that You have called us to do, 
how essential it is, O Lord, that we spend time first in communion with you to sit, at, to sit down at your feet, O Lord, and to receive the press instructions that you want us to be instructed regarding the things that you want us to accomplish in our lives as we give service unto you, Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that there are moments, O Lord God, that even though we are overwhelmed of many things, but then, Lord, your grace is always sufficient in all those things, O Father. Thank you, Lord God, that when we spend time alone with you, not only we are able to focus on your very works that you want us to accomplish, that we are able to focus on you, O Lord God, not to be over overwhelmed of the many things that we want to accomplish, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, that we can really focus on your strength and how you can give us the power to accomplish your very works that you want us to accomplish in our lives and also in giving service unto you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that we are able to accomplish all these things according to your strength and that we are able to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of your words instead of our own. And we thank you, Father, even, O oh Lord, that as we sit down at your feet, Lord, we are able to receive press instructions from you, Father, the way you want to accomplish the service that you want to do for you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. And Lord, as we come before you and as we respond to your words, O oh God, we ask, O oh Father, that you may give us grace, O oh Lord, that as we sit down at the feet of the Lord, we are able to listen to his very words. And that is something that you want us to continue in our lives. That is one better thing, Lord, that you had called us to do from time to time, O oh Lord God. And Father, thank you, Lord God, that the motivating factor that will always inspire us in doing things for you and for our Lord. And that we want to cherish always in our hearts is how we are able to listen to your very words. Father, we, it is our prayer, Lord, that you will help us to cultivate an intimate relationship, relationship with you, O Lord. That we are able to uh, spend time in communion with you, Father. And thank you, Lord God, for your very presence that fill our midst today. That as we focus ourselves on the many things that we have come to receive from you, Father, may you continue to give us grace and teach us, O Lord, that we are able to obey your very words, O Lord. Father, help us, O Lord God, to remove things that interfere in our lives, that we are able to spend time alone with you, Lord. And may you always give us, O Lord God, the things that we need that will always motivate us, that will always help us to spend time at the feet of Jesus Christ. May your name continuously be exalted, Father, in the midst of us, and that indeed, O oh Lord God, you will accomplish your very purpose in our lives as your people and as your church. Bless your people, O oh God, throughout still in this pandemic, Father. Even as we continue to put our hope and our trust, and as we continue to rely on you, O oh Lord, in everything, Father. Thank you, Father, for your awesome grace and for your goodness in the midst of us. We continue to honor you and give you praise. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we are celebrating with those people who are having their birthdays for this month of August and at the same time for our brothers and sisters who are celebrating also their wedding anniversary. Just like Romans chapter 12 verse 15, God commanded us to rejoice with those who are rejoicing. And we are also rejoicing with you brothers and sisters in Christ for those birthday celebrants. For this month, we want to thank the Lord for your lives and also for the goodness of the Lord of how God has given you another year out of His faithfulness. We thank the Lord also for our brothers and sisters who are celebrating their wedding anniversary of how the Lord has blessed your lives and also your family as you continue to rely on the Lord in your relationship. May the Lord, may the Lord continue to bless you all as you continue to live your lives to Jesus Christ. Let us come to the Lord and let us pray for our celebrants for this month of August. 
Father, indeed, we are so thankful, O Lord, for this time that we can acknowledge your goodness and your faithfulness in the lives of our brothers and sisters who are celebrating their birthdays and those couples, O Lord God, celebrating their wedding anniversary. We thank you, Father, that indeed, Lord, we can rejoice with them and that we acknowledge, Lord, that how good and faithful you are in their lives, O Lord. We thank you, Father, of how you are moving in the midst of them and how you are sustaining them continuously throughout their lives, even in this time of pandemic. Thank you, Lord God, for our birthday celebrants who are celebrating their birthdays, O oh God, for this month. Thank you for another year that you had given in their lives and how you had sustained them throughout the years, Lord, proving that you are indeed our God who provides, that indeed you are our Lord who looks upon their lives, O oh Lord. And Father, as we lift them up unto you, Lord, we ask and we pray that you will continue to bless them with strength and that you will fill their lives with all your goodness, O Lord God, that you will continuously bless them with long years, O Father, that they may continue to serve you, Lord. We ask and we pray, Father, that you may bless them bountifully and abundantly, O Lord, in all aspects of their lives, in all the things that they need, O Lord. And that indeed, O God, you may always bless them as well, even their families and their loved ones, wherever they are, O Lord. Father, may your name continuously be exalted, O Lord, in the midst of our brothers and sisters who are celebrating their birthdays, O Lord God. And that indeed, Lord, you will continue to bless them, O Lord, in all aspects of their lives. And that you alone, O Lord, will continue to guide them, O Lord God, and nourish them with your love and with your care. Thank you, Father, even for our brothers and sisters, couples, O oh Lord God, who are celebrating their wedding, wedding anniversaries for this month. We thank you, Father, for how you sustain them in their relationship and how you continue to mold their families, O oh Lord, and sustain their family, O oh Lord God, out of your goodness. We thank you, Father, for your love that endures forever, love that sustains them, O oh Lord, in their everyday relationship as husband and wife. And it is our prayer, O Lord, that you will continue to bind them with your love, with your grace, that as they continue to look upon you, O Lord, as the source of power, the source of provision, O Lord God, may you continue to sustain them, O Lord, in all aspects of their lives, O Lord. In times of testings and troubles, O Lord, they may always find you, O Lord God, uh, ready, O Lord God, that your presence will always fill the midst of them, to help them and to overcome their difficulties in their lives, O oh Lord. Bless their hearts, O oh Lord God, even as they continue to relate to one another as husband and wife. May you bless also their family, even their children as well. Lord, may your name always continuously be exalted in the midst of them and that you will be magnified in the midst of their relationship, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful day that we can honor you in the lives of our birthday celebrants and at the same time, those couples who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries. To you be the glory, honor, and praises, Father. This we ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now receive the blessing of our God as we close this service to the Lord. May the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus bless you and keep you strong during times of testing. May he cause his face to shine upon you and give you grace to endure with patience. May he lift up his countenance upon you to make you perfect and complete in him, to establish you clearly in the direction he gives you, to strengthen you through spiritual knowledge and by the power of the Holy Spirit, as you seek Him with all your heart. May the Lord settle you, making you secure and confident in His love and provision for your peace and well-being. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, our service has ended. May you go in peace with the love of our Lord. God bless you all.